Patrick Reed has eight PGA Tour victories, including a couple of WGC wins and, of course, a major championship taking the Masters. But he's never played well here. As a matter of fact, he's never finished inside the top 20 at the players. However, he has an abundance of confidence right now. That's stemming, of course, from his victory last month at the WGC Mexico Championship. I caught up with Patrick today and asked him about his belief that he could finally contend here at the stadium course. I feel really, really good and really solid where the game is, you know, on all aspects around how we're thinking around the golf course, how we're hitting the golf ball, how we're managing the misses. And, you know, when you're able to do that, it just gives you more confidence anytime you play because, uh, you know, when, when the days are good, it's easy to kind of ride that ship. It's when the days are bad, are you able to rebound and continue to, uh, you know, to play and produce a good number rather than, you know, just completely shoot yourself out of it. Now, there is a shadow that follows Patrick Reed stemming from his rules infraction at the Hero World Challenge late last year. He has heard criticism from fans, the media, and some from fellow players. Today, he was asked at his press conference when he thinks that noise will slow down. Well, winning always helps everything, but, uh, you know, really at the end of the day, the noise goes away once, once you all decide it goes away at the end of the day. I mean, I feel like the players and all of us have moved on. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is go out and, and continue playing good golf and, and doing what we're supposed to do. We will see how Patrick Reed will be received here at the players. One other note, if you remember when he won his first WGC event, that at Doral, he said after winning that he feels like he is a top five player in the world. He has a shot here this week to finally move inside the top five of the official world golf ranking. He said today if that happens, it would mean everything. Rich. All right, Todd Reed is off at 824 tomorrow morning with Patrick Cantlay quietly put together quite a career well inside the top 10 in the world and Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, David, he talks about the noise going away if um, if we want it to go away. Right. And doesn't feel like you know, the fans nor the media are ready to let it go. Uh, what, what's missing in your estimation when you listen to Patrick Reed? Well, you know, his, his ability on the golf course, uh, earning the moniker of Captain America, the ability to close out tournaments, the ability to strike the golf ball are unquestionable. Not at all. You know, truly unquestionable. Uh, eighth in the world, I believe, right now. Uh, just a remarkable player, just won in Mexico. Uh, but I think that in sport, as fans, as media, we, we, we admire and look up to our sports heroes. And I think that we're quick to forgive. Uh, but you, as fans and such, we need a little contrition and a little you know, mea culpa uh, that we're people too, that the, the, the athlete is people too. I mean, we're, we're, we're longing to connect with these athletes, with these heroes of ours, uh, you know, and you got to have a little bit of humanity in there, I think. And, and, and for Patrick, you know, I've, I've liked being around him. I've liked talking to him. Uh, but I think that it's something that hasn't quite been put to bed. What could he or should he say? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't have that answer. Anybody? I think, I think it's... <laughs> Go ahead. I, I've got a view on that. I think about, and I'm going to now use a different sports reference. I know that's your department, but I, I'm <laughs> sorry I may step on your toes, okay. Rich. But I think about Roger Clemens and Andy Pettit. Uh, they were both accused of using a banned substance. Um, Roger Clemens uh, denied it, I think still denies it. Um, I think because of his sense of urgency to get in the Hall of Fame, because knowing with that on his record, he probably wouldn't get in. Andy Pettit, same situation, came out and says, yes, I, I did it. I'm sorry. I wanted to be with my teammates. I was trying to help my team. It was a poor decision. It completely went away with Andy Pettit. For Roger Clemens, I think it still follows him today. Yeah, the magical reparative power of honesty. You know, uh, after such a public exposure of indecency, one would have thought, or I would have thought, that the great golfer Patrick Reed would cease and desist. But to the contrary. I, I get it, by the way. But to the contrary. Uh, he seems to be empowered by the scrutiny and the criticism. And I would argue that that doesn't so much reveal a strength of mind as it indicts a lack of conscience or even a troubled character, which is a shame. 
because he's 29 years old and he's going to be on our leaderboards for another decade plus. But he's never going to get his due as a golfer, the credit for all the talent he has, unless he acknowledges that his explanation of what happened in the Bahamas not only did not get off the ground, it crashed and burned. Um, and I, I think you're spot on with that assessment. Um, uh, Todd Lewis knows him pretty well. I mean, he's covered him for a long time. And, and Todd says he's well aware of what's being said about him and that he's bothered and motivated by it. And he, well, maybe motivated as to compete, but it could go away. And it's not up to us. It's up to him. Uh, David Ferretti said he's Captain Oblivious. In other words, you know, the ability to compartmentalize. I actually think he is as Todd said, well aware, uh, but that he's sort of a compulsive competitor. He'll do whatever it takes to win, not unlike, say, a Pete Rose or go way back, a Ty Cobb. Look, I, I don't know where you'd have to go to mentally to dismiss this incident to insignificance and be able to compete with a quiet mind. I, I just, I don't know where that goes, but I don't think anybody watching him, and again, you look at anybody that had a hint just a hint in the history of the game, and there's been a handful of people that have, have had a hint of a reputation in the game of golf. It never went away. Right. But there has never been an incident so obvious that indicts a player. So he can't just navigate these whispers because this is loud and upfront, and it needs to be addressed by him before I think he'll get his due as a golfer uh, and all the credit that he's due for his talent, which is amazing. Yeah, that said, as a golfer, he reminds you of a you know, living legend. Who is that and, and why? About Phil Mickelson. Right? Well, I, I think as in a golfer, some ways. yeah, as a golfer, he's, he does remind me a little bit of Phil Mickelson. How you know, so? He's, he's uh, well, I mean, to get geeky golfy about it for a minute, you know, he's, he's got a real open club face coming down. He's got a lot of flip at the bottom, which makes him not a great driver, but a really good wedge player, as you were talking about. There's always trade-offs in the golf swing. And he's a good putter. He's, he's got all that. And like Phil, he's won at the Masters. And like Phil, with the exception of an odd event here or two, well, almost everybody struggled here. But you're going to struggle on this golf course when you're but, straying from the fairway as much as he does. Right. Well, you know, he's, he's not in the fairway particularly often on a normal golf course. And this is no normal golf course. Uh, you know, so when you're hitting 55, roughly 55 percent of the fairways for the year, that's going to fall well below 50 percent at TPC Sawgrass. And that's why the performance hasn't been there in the past, because it's difficult enough to hit these greens and get the golf ball onto these greens. But the, the challenge of doing it out of the rough, uh, it, it just heightens it. And, and it and it's almost becomes an impossibility. You've got to get it into over 50 half of these fairways, 55, 60 percent of these fairways for the week if you want to win.